At Dell, I uh, manage caching portfolio on PowerEdge side. One of my product is uh, Fluid Cache. And so I'll be going more in a deep dive into the Fluid Cache, how it works, what kind of test results we have had so far. So I'll encourage if you ask me technical questions as long as the time permits. So uh, with that, let's uh, go start into it. So I'll be, I got 30 slides here and I'll take like around two minutes per slide. So 60 minutes, no, I'm just kidding. We'll go at the pace. We won't be dictated by the slides, but we'll most importantly answer questions. Okay. Um, <coughs> why fluid cache? So uh, application performance is at the uh, core of everything, right? So there could be many factors which affect application performance, right? Inefficient code, development factor, deployment factor. But if the fact, the reason for application performance to be slow is slow access to the data, that's what we will dig down into, and that's the problem with fluid cache we are trying to solve. So why, why that problem? Why the slow access to data? So especially in SAN case, you got many servers, we got running applications on them, you got a backend SAN storage, and uh, the data traversing from storage to those servers is slow. And why? Because of the latency issue, which comes from a few different factors. One being the storage itself is comprising of drives, rotating drives, adds to the latency. The controller of the storage connecting to a storage array is a SAS connectivity adding to the latency. The SAN connectivity itself, like the SAN network, so your applications are running uh, many users, like thousands of users are hitting those servers. All of those users are getting their data over one SAN fabric adding to the latency. So basically the latency is what from SAN data traversing from storage to server is uh, causing the data to be delayed and making your application to look slow, right? And that's the problem. All those three factors is what we are trying to solve with Fluid Cache, all right? So, so one of the way to solve that is cache most actively used data in the storage itself. What cache medium to use? So before I go in the fluid cache itself, there are ways you can cache data, many different mediums, right? So as you cache data in a low latency medium itself, for example, processors themselves, your application IOPS goes higher. So, so if there is a nirvana in future someday that every bit of data could stay inside the processor, you're talking billions or more than billions of IOPS, right? Well, when, whenever that happens, until then, we have another ways to solve that problem. So we are using in Fluid Cache the, the rectangle here, the flash, the PCI SSDs as our cache medium, which gives you latency in microsecond. Okay. So keeping that in mind, that's one of our building blocks behind Fluid Cache. Those flash drives, by the way, are newer standards. We have an NVMe. John's going to talk more about flash. Uh, so we'll discuss, go in detail with John's. Uh, but those NVMe drives is what our target for cache medium in uh, Fluid Cache. For Approximately sale. what uh, latency in microseconds? Uh, it's a lower microsecond. I think it's about 50 microsecond is the, okay. is the average. Yeah. Wow, that's that's. I mean, it's eight microseconds for just for the PCI plane itself. So correct. That's, yep. that's not bad. So having said that, before I go into the fluid cache, where would you put the cache in? So there, that's an important aspect. So in my problem slide, I had you could put, uh, the problem is coming from three different factors: SAN connectivity itself, the 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 connectivity between controller and the array. So if you put cache or flash in the storage itself. You're still bottlenecked by the same connectivity. You could move it up, make it as a flash as an appliance. There's still a bottleneck. As you grow your compute, your, your bottleneck keeps increasing. Or you put flash in the server itself, then you're reducing those bottlenecks. So with Fluid Cache, we moved the flash in the server itself. So with that, let's dig down into Fluid Cache for saying how it works. So this is our problem statement again. Many servers. Dell PowerEdge or non-Dell servers in the industry space, we find accessing a back-end storage. In this case, Dell Compellent SC8000. Latency is an issue. 
for especially for those uh, data dependent applications. Uh, first thing first, you Fluid Cache for SAN itself is a software product. It gets installed on all those servers. Once you install that, have few of those servers. In this screen, I'm showing three servers got those PCI SSD NVMe drives we talked about, 50 microsecond latency drives, right? So few of those, I showed three here. We need three minimum server in a cache cluster, so that's why I started with three. Put those drives in it. Uh, these are hot pluggable drives offered by Dell first time when we came up with the PCI SSD, the first Dale was the first one to offer PCI SSD in hot pluggable manner. Now NVMe is a standard industry wide, and uh, you have those hot pluggable drives. So you could have them in your existing servers if uh, you, they are NVMe compatible. Oh, if not, there are PCI SSD based card available, which can go in a few of those servers as well. Open the chassis, plug those cards. Having done that, next thing is, you know, remember we are solving latency problems. So. If you put those drives together, we bring them together as one big cache pool. And we do that over a low latency network. And that's important because the latency is the problem we are solving. If we would have done those cache pools over a normal TCP IP, we would have brought back the latency in the network. So if it doesn't use TCP IP, is it still using Ethernet but not TCP IP? Correct. Okay. So this low latency network is RDMA. Okay. which is uh, typically one-third the latency of TCP IP. Okay. But still RDMA over Ethernet. Yeah, that's our first implementation, RDMA over, that's why we call it uh, Rocky, RDMA over converged Ethernet. But uh, that's our first implementation. That doesn't mean architecturally fluid cache uh, does not work on TCP IP or uh, RDMA or IB or, <coughs> or IWARP. We did not validate on those yet. Okay. Do you, when you talk about converged Ethernet, do you need dedicated NICs for that private network? Uh, yes, we do need dedicated NICs, but you can have the same switch, which is being used for, let's say, iSCSI for your So this is basically a server-side cache with a PCIe card in each server, and then each server has got a separate uh, network interface which runs this backbone network. Correct. That's okay. absolutely right. So those servers up there, all get one uh, network card, which is uh, our first qualified card is Mellanox's uh, ConnectX3. And that card connects to one of those switches, which could be iSCSI switch, as long as you carve out a VLAN of its own. Does it need to be a low latency Mellanox switch or? Yeah, it has to be, low, no, not Mellanox switch, Mellanox NIC. Uh, Mellanox NIC, but does it need to be a low latency switch? Yes. Okay. The switch has to be one of the validated switch. So we validated a few of the force 10 switches and uh, one Cisco switch. Are you using so, TCP for this? No, we don't. So we, we actually recommend in first release DCB to be di disabled. Yes. What, what's a, what Cisco switch do you support? Uh, S4810, S6000, S5000, okay. and Cisco. Oh, you, I, I'm sorry. You asked Cisco, right? Yeah. Uh, 5548 UP. Okay. Nexus. So that is a common kind of thing, but in order to do server level caching, you you need a, a low latency network switch. Network switch. Yeah, okay. otherwise you defeat the whole purpose. Okay, yeah, it's, it's just all optical, no copper, right? RDMA doesn't do copper. Over Ethernet. Over copper. Ethernet. Yeah. So yeah. one gig? Even? Oh, it's got 10 giggy as well as 40 giggy. So if you use the switch, S6000 is 40 giggy. Uh, you got. You, Depending on your workload, you would want to choose which switch or what network you would want. Well, uh, 10 gigabit T is copper. It would yeah. work over that. It's all copper. Okay. Yep. And you need three servers to? Minimum three is a requirement. Why is that? Uh, <laughs> further in the deck, I do explain that Fluid Cache does write caching, right? Okay. So, write caching is our unique proposition to the market. If you do write caching, the data coming in are getting written in the cache. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure the data in the cache is safe. So we do have a high availability of the data in the cache. That's why we need three. So there are services running in each of the service on those servers from Fluid Cache. And the data are replicated, especially when the right data is coming, they get replicated to second switch, uh, second server. So is this asynchronous or synchronous? The replication? Yeah. So it doesn't matter, so, so the point is, before we send an acknowledgement to application, we make a copy of that data 
into the second server. I don't know if I have the graphic in here or not, but I'll, if I do, that will do a much. So data comes in, let's say in the application rotate data, before this gets acknowledged here, we make a replica copy of this over here. Sure. Right? And then Fluid Cache will send an acknowledgement to your application. Right? So yeah, your writes are super fast because they are written in the cache. Now, in the background, we'll flush the data over this SEN network to the SEN storage. Once the data has made to the SEN, then we'll re delete the replica. So that actually probably, if the question if arising in your mind that are, am I mirroring or am I reading, none. I'm ma managing only the writes, making a copy, one copy of the block data into the second server, and then I fl remove the data. For write reads, I don't have to care. Absolutely, yes. So is this just a virtualization thing, or is can you install your Fluid Cache software on a bunch of Windows servers or Linux servers, Hyper-V hosts, ESX hosts? What's, what's the sort of range of uh, implementations? Use the backend storage, because it's using the storage, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. So great question, it's because it's a software. So uh, we are dependent on OS. Our first release, which we did in July, we supported Linux OS. Rail and SUSE. Uh, recently, we released on VMware as well, uh, VMware 5.5 U2, and uh, we are working on native Windows. Right. Uh, this, but the most important point is the last point here. Uh, yeah, on VMware, okay. ESX. Is it a kernel module or is it a VSA or? No, we a VSA. Okay. So yeah. In a three-node setup. Could you tolerate two failures or just one as far as uh, Yeah, you, I can tolerate two failures, but I won't like it. Right. So I would throw errors. Right. Yeah. And worst case scenario. Yeah. You You're not going to lose data. Okay, if two went down and you're throwing errors. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, even two failures, I'll start throwing errors. And, uh, and then the third failure, like two failures, uh, one thing is I'll put you in the write through mode, not write back. So any new writes coming in, I won't let you, uh, I won't give you acknowledgement until the writes have made all the way to the storage. Makes sense, right? Yeah. I'm good. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, did, okay. <laughs> I know I'm okay. Is it one VSA? <laughs> it's a one VSA, one per, VSA per, server, host? per host. Okay. Per host. All right. Now, well, actually on the, yeah, I, I know what I was trying to, so, the last point here is map volume to a uh, cache pool. And it actually ties back to the OS question also. So if you, last point, once you do the map your volume, the cache pool you created in the previous steps to the compellent volumes, whichever volume you want to accelerate data, that's, those are the volumes you map to the cache pool. So what, the, what that tells you is, Anything in the application, you did not touch a thing. So we're completely application agnostic. So, so think about that in a second, for a second. <laughs> Virtualized environment. So like if you're running Windows VMs in your hosts, window, VMs themselves are considered as a application. So I'm agnostic to them. You do not change anything. So you can run Windows as a virtualized server inside your ESX. Make sense? It's all in there. Correct. Yep. So do you need to explicitly map which LUNs or whatever storage on your Dell compellent to your server host, be it VMware or, or Linux at the moment? Yes, okay. that's correct. Yeah, and you could do all, few, whatever. It's, in it's terms of you. all, meaning all, all LUNs or all, all VMs? LUNs. Or? All LUNs. Okay, so it's a LAN-based thing, it's not necessarily a VM-based thing or a... Absolutely. Okay. That's correct. Yep. And it's only Dell storage? Currently, only SC8000. Okay. So, uh, and that's, uh, of course, being Dell, we would want to do an integration. We had the flexibility to do integration with com uh, compellent uh, uh, SC8000. Uh, the, the reason is we do write-back hashing. That puts pressure on that controller itself, if you are doing send best snapshots or anything, if you didn't know that there is a cache which has newer data, your snapshot will be uh, outdated. 
Okay, so sorry. we had we, so we created a seamless integration uh, with Compellent, uh, which actually allows you to do any every capability of Compellent. Okay, so. Uh, as long as it's a file system and it's not interfering. So, see, Fluid Cache doesn't care what application or file system you are running. As long as you're mapping those LUNs on SC8000. Yeah. Your system. Your system. Yeah. Providing NFS. So, okay, I can put this in front of the FS8600. So, today, no. Today, we, we are not supporting that in front of the FS8600. Okay. So is there particular software that's running on the Dell Compellent SC8000 yes. to coordinate that? Yes. And it's not actually necessarily for a performance thing or any integration. It's just about so your snapshots are, are consistent. So it's taking that's stuff. Correct. So in a way, the, if you create a hardware snapshot, the Dell Compellent is talking back to the cache and saying, flush your cache to me so I can make a hardware. Absolutely. So that's exactly right. So the SC version of Compellent has to be certain version before Fluid Cache can be supported. So that 6.5 has got uh, Fluid Cache compatibility code in it, integration code, and that knows that there's a Fluid Cache running before allowing you to take snapshot. It flushes the data from cache pool and allows you to do, do the snapshot. Also, second thing, this integration comes with an enterprise manager integration of Compellent. So everything with Fluid Cache you manage through enterprise manager. So that also is for, for Windows when it's coming out, VSS snapshots would coordinate this whole, this whole chain. Okay. Mm. So given that it's, it's per LUN, not per VM, would I be right in assuming we could get per VM come vVol time? Meaning, is, is it going to support vVols, I guess, would be? Uh, that's, we're working on that aspect right now. We, it's all under strategic yeah. discussion, yeah. Well, it's fully expected to, though. Yeah. Now, is that... A1 or? <clears throat> okay. Any other questions? I know it's a competitor, but is it doing a similar thing or what's different to Pernix, Pernix data? Obviously, that's only VMware, um, only virtualization, but from a conceptual point of view, do you see it as doing a similar thing? But your product does more. Or more compared to EMC Extreme Cache or Fusion I.O. or those ones, yes. is it more similar than it's different? And where in the case of Pernix, Pernix is straight software and can leverage any underlying hardware that you happen to throw into the mix. Correct. Uh, EMC Extreme and I.O. Turbine from Fusion I.O. Mm -hmm. only do read caching. So that, there is the biggest difference, right? No right caching from there. Uh, cache pooling is not available in either of those solutions. Mm -hmm. right. We actually did one of those, like, and I'm not allowed to say the competitor's name, but did a comparison test in our labs with one of those, uh, and uh, we, f we could do a three times better performance on an OLTP performance. Right? Now, to the point he was asking about Pernix. So yeah. Pernix is straight Pernix. software. Right. Pernix is a... Um, if I understand correctly, they are on TCP IP. So I don't see them bringing the lower latency. Technically, no, they operate at whatever kernel based storage rights go at. Yeah, so but they've, it they've written their own communication way. protocol that dramatically um, simplifies the wrong word, but takes out a lot of the latency of TCP IP. So it's mm -hmm. running over the, the Ethernet, but it's you know, massively correct. Yeah. Um, I can't think it's of the word. Much. So a lot of it happens in kernel, in memory, as an in internal operation. Forgive my my ignorance in this, because sure. um, I, I I don't have any any depth to my knowledge on uh, NVMe. But did you push NVMe for this particular application? Is this the reason? I mean, like, were you guys wanting to build an ultra low latency, uh, basically flash cache network? Is is that the goal? Which like, is why DCB is recommended. Right. Well, uh, DCB is more from our networking perspective. Our VMware implementation, we need a, a, a DCB disabled. Uh, but uh, NVMe, or even prior to that, we had a PCI SSDs, which is uh, SPAC2. We've been using that in this solution. Mm -hmm. uh, so Dell had PCI SSD concept prior to Fluid Cache. Right. 
and uh, uh, and we see this as fluid cache as a good use case for NVMe and PCI SSD <coughs> as well. So okay. yes, this is a good use case, but they are being used elsewhere also in without fluid cache. Also. What, what use cases are you are you seeing customers wanting this for? Is it for for databases, for Exchange, for? That's a great question. Actually, uh, I can skip few of these slides. And That's okay. Go. You like slides? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, here is my high availability. That, that so if you. I could just quickly go over before I get, I have some use case slides. <laughs> so yeah, this is high availability. Uh, the, the, the writes comes in from application B. Uh, so does all the traffic go through the appliance? No, all the... Uh, yeah, through Fluid Cache. So yeah, in this... The, the OVA, like the, the appliance, which runs on ESX, or... There's no appliance. Okay. It's software. Software. It's software. So oh, these three servers, mm -hmm. just, as, just as an example, if you map these three lines of fluid compellents in to that cache pool in the uh, green box, writes coming in from application B gets written, we get replicated onto the next server, something happens to that drive, we'll make another copy before we send it to an application back. We'll also bring back the data for C, so application C can continue reading from cache, right? And then we'll flush the, the data and we'll delete the replica, right? And uh, when, if the server dies, again, we'll make a replica copy, we'll do the application C. It, it's not, application C moving to server B is not fluid cache uh, functionality. That's uh, IT infrastructure would they, if they have a redundancy for application C, but we will we will bring the data for C back into the server cache, and we'll flush the data and delete the replica, right? And the snapshot, the snapshot request comes. We will flush the the appropriate volume data down to send, uh, so then snapshot can be taken. <coughs> and while we are doing it, we put the cache in the write through mode, so no new data are written in the cache. Okay. So let's talk about use cases. So yes, uh, we do see uh, database acceleration is one of the biggest use case uh, as per TBR research also. Uh, database is where people want to do a lot more uh, flash usage for their uh, uh, application to accelerate. So database is one, VMware is where we are seeing a lot more traction. Uh, uh, as well, virtualized VDI environment. Uh, Fluid Cache does, like, you know, you heard about 5 million IOPS, so we do do lot number of IOPS, but also we are able to reduce cost per virtual machine in VDI environment because we are, uh, John's not going to like it, but we are able to go and do away with expensive SAN, right? Because the data can be held in cache so you can have a, a inexpensive SAN. And that's how we are able to compromise, uh, optimize dollar per virtualized virtual machine, right? So those which are a few of the use cases. Which Good. particular elements are able to reduce cost for or reduce cost for a virtual machine and give you greater VDI penetration numbers? Like how exactly is this going to help that other than you know probably handling your IO blender a little bit easier? Yeah. It, I mean, for the, what we did is we did a VDI test, right? For high-end uh, power users and high-end users of a VDI, typical requirement of uh, IOPS is about uh, 40, uh, 48,000 for 1,000 VDI users, right? It's a, it's a, so, so if we go with that, you need a pretty high-end, uh, and that has a mix of reads and writes. So you need a pretty high end some SAN. Or a lot we, of cash, yeah. Yeah, so we, we could reduce that SAN footprint to be rotating drives only mm -hmm. and put a cache layer in the middle and we could uh, do uh, a better than 48,000 IOPS performance for 1,000 VDI uh, customers or like in that environment. What that did to is if we do a cost comparison uh, in the industry mm -hmm. uh, for that kind of uh, VDI solutions by our competitors, we could do like a, almost a third of uh, uh, dollar per VM 
and still giving about three times the performance. So a third of a dollar, like approximately like 33 cents per VM, right? Is that, is that what you mean by a third of a yeah, dollar? I, yeah, I, if, if, the dollar, if, if the dollar is the comparison, yeah, we would okay. could do thir 33 cents, but I'm not going by the absolute no, number. No, no, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. That's what so, just, just quick thing, is it Dell servers only as well, or could you use a solution in any other server you, you uh, have? So, you could use, so uh, I was going to go through these use cases later on, but we can, <laughs> it's all available. So, I will, I'm going to go back to my the build slide, and I want to explain that a little bit. Maybe I missed that. I was, uh, was just saying, do you yeah. have certain qualified so servers? Those five servers out there on the right? Okay. Yeah. They could be Dell or non-Dell servers. Actually, we did a paper on uh, HP servers running without fluid cache, giving an, a, a performance, let's say performance A, and then we bring in three Dell servers, workload continues to run on HP server, and we could boost the performance of that workload by three times. And are there specific then PCI cards that then need to be they qualified don't need for PCI that? PCI SSDs. So these servers, these we call cache client servers on the right. Oh, they're the cache client servers. So they, they just run workload. They leverage that cache pool provision by Dell servers. Okay, so the cache pool needs to reside on a, on a Dell server Dell with server. a whatever Dell's branded um, uh, cards, but then other servers can take advantage of it. That's correct. Okay. Yep. You have a one synchronously replicated between two SC thousands and enable write caching. Can fluid cache manage this? That's a question. That's a, question? That's a fluid cache. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's trying to go back to I'm it. just getting you the right person there. If you have a LUN synchronously replicated between two SC eight thousands, right? So mm -hmm. on the SC you've got it handle there, and you enable write caching, can fluid cache manage that? Fluid cache can manage it, but it's going to be you're going to be delayed by the the sync replication, obviously. So we're going to we're going to yeah. Okay. We're going to have to acknowledge on both sides and return it. So it, instead of just the normal two acts, you're going to like 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 four acts maybe. Well, know, four, four or five acts, but but it'll all be really fast. 